Welcome everybody on this Monday afternoon to our tassels class. My name's Claire. I'll be hanging out in the chat with you here. Um, I can answer some of your questions there or pass them on to Darren so he can demonstrate for us on screen. I'll also be popping the handout in the chat in case you need that again. Um, and just a reminder, of course, we said we're recording this. So if you have to stop or need to come back or leave before the end of class, you'll be able to watch that all uh, back as many times as you need to. I know that Darren is showing off some of his massive tassels there. <laughs> we will let him get started. All right, welcome to class. Um, I, I like a big tassel. What can I say? You know, if you're gonna if you're gonna have a tassel, you may as well you know go for it and have the biggest tassel you possibly can. But um, I use this one. I actually use this one in my apartment. I have this hanging on my one of my doorknobs. And it's just this is kind of crazy and dramatic and a little over the top. But I think that's okay. You know, why not be over the top if you if you're gonna have a tassel? You know, go all the way. So um, <clears throat> I'm gonna use a lot of different yarns today. So some of the ones, um, the ones that are listed in your handout are, are also um, and gonna be used. But some other ones are I have Heartland and Yosemite. Um, this one I've used about half of it. Um, this one is called Rocky Mountains, and this is also Heartland. I have um, Woolies Thick and Quick and Cranberry. I'm going to use Heartland, and this one I think is it's not, is it Bryce Canyon, Claire? Do you know what color this is? It's either Bryce Canyon or I don't think it's Yellowstone. Um, and then this one is Great Smoky Mountains in this kind of grayish one. But any um, colors that you have. And, and yarn would be great to use. You can use whatever colors you like. Um, they do take quite a bit of yarn. So a tassel is kind of a luxury item like over, over the years, like people didn't just, um, I mean, if you were decorating your home and using tassels, it was because you had excess. You know, in, in history, you know, people didn't have, you couldn't just go buy yarn at a, um, like a, you couldn't just go to Michael's and buy, you know, skeins and skeins of yarn to, to knit with, crochet with and make tassels out of. People had to make their own yarn and um, then make tassels out of it. it was quite a luxury. So you know, it's nice that we we you know we have access to the great uh, abundance of yarn and different colors that we have today, and we can do anything. You know, we can do anything we want. So um, lots of different kinds of tassels. Can you see me? Hey, Darren. Cool. Yes. Just a reminder: when you turn your head, we can't hear you. Okay. So there's lots of different kinds of tassels you can make any kind of tassel that you can imagine. I mean, if you just Google tassels and like look, start looking at what's available, then, you know, it's, there's more available than you could ever like make probably. But I'm gonna go over three different styles of tassels today. And if you have any questions, please uh, put the questions in the chat because um, that always makes the class a little nicer when we have more questions and I love to, to answer questions. So let's go ahead and change the view to the view of my hands and, we can go ahead and, and there we go. Okay, so this um, style of tassel here, this little tassel, it's the same style as this really big one. Um, so probably most people don't want or need a tassel this big. Um, and this does, I think this took probably maybe three whole skeins of yarn from this. This is Woolies, I'm sorry, this is um, it's Lion Brand Home hometown bonus bundle in these colors. And this yarn is available on lionbrand.com, also on michaels.com. But it's the same um, tassel. And I just have this tassel done in a couple of different stages of completion. Let's plug my steamer in. Warm up. So we're gonna do lots of different things to it. So the first thing um, to do is we need to cut the yarn in the proper lengths. And I have this piece of little piece of wood and my father kind of cut this out for me. But if you don't have wood, then you can use just, um, just cut pieces of cardboard. So you can always just use cardboard, but I knew I was gonna be teaching this class over and over. So I um, asked my father to, to cut me out this uh, more permanent pencil. And you can use your cell phone. Um, you can wrap it around your cell phone. I've done that a lot. Anything that's just about the right size that you want. And whatever size you want is the right size. There's no, um, doesn't have to be a certain size. So you just want to 
cut off so my yarn's in a tangle. Of course, my yarn's in a tangle. It's untangled a little bit. Okay. So when I wrap it around, I usually do a double it. It goes twice as fast. And I'm going to wrap it 25 times, and then there'll be 50 strands. Um, you don't want to pull it tight when you wrap it because um, and when you release it, it kind of bounces back. So you just want to hold it um, nice and loose when you're wrapping it. So one, two, three. And now I've got a big tangle to work with. It's always a tangle when you don't want there to be. Just use a single. And you just want to wrap it. I did mine um, so there were 50 strands of yarn. And depending on how thick you want your tassel, you can do more or less. And also, depending on how thick your yarn is, you might want to do more or yes, more or less. So just depending. So once you get it wrapped, I've kind of lost count, but once you get it wrapped to the point where you think that looks right, then you want to cut it. And it helps if you have a darning needle. You don't need this, but it certainly does kind of help to get under. So I'm gonna go under all the strands. And then just tie it in a nice secure knot, just like a square knot. Doesn't have to be anything fancy because this really won't be seen. Do you want to be pretty tight? So tight in a nice tight knot, kind of just really secure. And then on the opposite side, I'm just gonna cut and open it up. And so then you end up with something like this. Now to make this um is kind of this handle with the top. All you do is you're just gonna wrap your yarn that you cut and you just wanna wrap it. And you do wanna pull this very tight, or I like to. And I'm just wrapping it around, trying not to get this other parts of the tassel in it. And you want to go a couple of inches on one side and a couple of inches on the other side. And again, it depends on how big you want the handle to be. If you want it to be big enough to hang on a doorknob, then you might want to measure it out. Or if you just want it, you know, just big enough to put another piece of yarn through or hang on a hook or a small knob like on a cupboard, then you can make it however big you want. Let's see. I want to kind of go in both directions. And then I'm going to tie this off. And I'm going to just tie it to one of the strands from the tassel. You don't want it unraveling. And then just bend it in half. And you can use different um, colors of yarn, um, or you can make it um, all one color like this one is, depending on whatever you want. And then you just fold it in half and then you just wrap that with yarn to make it secure and then tie it really tight. And then sometimes if things don't look quite right, like right here, there's a little place that didn't get wrapped. So you can go in with a darning needle and kind of rewrap that a bit, to make it look a little bit neater if you need to. So like that one bit, I wasn't. I'm trying to do this fast to kind of get through each one. So I wasn't super careful. 
um, and that kind of got a little messy. So if that happens, you can either take it off and start again, or you can, it's just a little bit, then you can go in with a burning needle like this and just kind of rewrap it. And if you decide you wanted the handle in a different color, you could go over this with another color or you could do stripes or anything you want. And that's pretty much the construction of this tassel once you get it constructed. And then trim off any excess. And after you get the tassel finished to that point, um, you can either leave it like this, um, which is very nice. I like to unravel mine um, to give them another layer of detail. And so you can unravel them. And that, that takes quite a bit of time. It's quite tedious. So um, if you want to unravel them, but then it, it has this kind of crimp curly look, which I like. I like that look on, on a lot of the tassels. But if you don't like that crimped curly look, then you can steam it and you can see the difference. So you can make a decision, you know, do you want to steam it? I think this looks a little more elegant. Um, and this one, I don't know, it could be elegant too. It just this looks more playful and more whimsical to me. So, and it's just a personal style choice. So that is, were any questions on this one, on how to make this one? Any, have you ever made a tassel like this, Claire? I was going to say, I noticed when you were wrapping, you tied sort of like in the middle of your piece of cardboard. I've always tied at the top end and then cut along the opposite, like bottom end. Yeah, that's how I, I mean, intuitively, but I found it kind of hard when I tied at the very top to get the, um, to get the knot right at the very top. And then when I, it ends up being a little bit off to the side. And then when I cut it, I try to cut it off to the side on the bottom. And sometimes I would end up getting off. I just found it a little bit easier to do it in the middle and then cutting it right in the middle on the back. So, um, you know, which, whatever you want, I think is fine. Okay. And then just go over again, what does steaming the tassel do to it? Okay. So if we want, let's switch the camera back to the front so you can see my face again. And I will demonstrate that I've got my steamer nice and hooked up. Is it back on my face? I can't tell. My camera still has it on the hands. Uh, it hasn't switched just yet here. Yeah, switch it. If you want to switch it back to my face, let me know when it's switched. Okay, there we go. Okay, so I've got this steamer. And if you don't have a steamer, you can use a, like just fill up a, like a tea kettle or even just a pot of water. Or if you have a steam iron, that might work. Just be careful you don't um, like burn yourself. But if you steam it, so let me just steam. I'm going to steam this one, which isn't unraveled but you'll see how fluffy it is. You'll see, um, even it's this, the steam just kind of relaxes all of the strands of yarn. And it is acrylic yarn, so you don't wanna melt it, but, and so you can see just this little bit of steam um, really helps to kind of relax it. And so you can kind of see the difference. This one is not steamed and this one is steamed. And so I didn't even unravel this one, um, I left the yarn strands intact, but just by hitting it with that little bit of steam. And one thing I will tell you, if you, um, when you're trimming these tassels and um, you know, making them nice and neat, it is a lot better to steam them first and then trim them because it um, kind of helps the yarn to all relax and to all be the same length. Um, and then when you cut it, it, you're more likely to get a nice straight edge than if it's, if they're unsteamed and they're kind of crimped. It's kind of like kind of cutting curly hair. If you have curly hair and you don't brush it out and you cut it across the, and it's nice and even, then when you brush it out, it's not gonna be even because the, um, the strands were not all brushed out even. So, and then see, it makes it so much nicer to, to trim it if it's been steamed. Whereas this one, because the strands are all kind of, even though they're not, and they're still kind of curly and kind of twisted. So it makes it a little bit harder to get a nice even. So I'm not, I'm not gonna steam this one, so I'll have it for the next class, but you can see it really, do you like them better steamed or unsteamed, Claire? What do you think? Cause you can do it either way. 
and I then think this if one I'm is... gonna leave the yarn whole, I like it steamed, but I like the crimpy curly one. I do like the crimpy curly ones too. Um, this one was unraveled and you can see the different look and this one was not unraveled. They don't look a lot different really on camera, but in person they do. This one looks a little silkier in person because it's been unraveled. So you can kind of practice and see and see whatever you like. So, and then you can make these tassels as big as you want or leave them small. So um, any questions about this particular style? Let me move this before I move like this. Any questions at all? Uh, general tassel question. Um, Luli wants to know what about using multiple types of yarn in a single tassel? How would you? I think that would that? be fabulous. Yeah, um, you could use different. You could use different thicknesses of yarn. You could use different colors of yarn. Um, you could use like a nice boucle and a silky yarn and a ribbon yarn and even strips of fabric in a. I mean, any everything you can think of is probably worth doing because tassels are really just an expression of um, like self, like your self-expression, like wh whatever, however you want to express, like um, if it's gonna match a drape or if you're matching wallpaper, or if you just wanna dress up a corner of, you know, if you wrap it around a doorknob or on a cupboard, you know, anything. So any other questions? And what, so if you wanted to hold multiple yarns, would you hold them all together at once or would you wrap them in layers or? Well, um, that really depends on how you want it to be. So with this one, I used all the same yarn, but I used different colors and I held them all together and wrapped them equally. And so it's equally dispersed in between. Um, if you wrap them separately, you could get like big chunks of stripe. Like you could get like all blue and then teal and then gray and then black. You could have stripes come down, which would be really fun. Or you know you could have like a mohair and a boucle and a worsted weight yarn and strips of fabric in different um, areas. Or I've seen them before where like the whole center of the tassel is one kind of yarn and then there's another kind over top of it. Um, and then whatever's in the center is usually not as pretty. And then that way it just kind of fills in the center with some kind of plain um, yarn. And then the, what's on the outside is more decorative. So you could do it all together and have it dispersed, dispensed, you know, nice and evenly like this one is, or you could <clears throat> do them in chunks and have, you know, you could do half and half, or you could have it however you want. Does that make sense? Yeah, that makes sense. Anything else? I think we're good to continue. Okay. So the next one I want to you is, um, this is just more of, uh, it's a real traditional one. If this is showing up well, it's white, so it's, maybe it's reflecting a light. And there's that one. And then there's this one, which is gray with this teal top. And then this one, it's the same type of tassel. This one is blue with um, a, the red, the kind of cranberry on the top. This one is, I don't know if it's showing up or not, it's kind of braided. Um, the top of the tassel. I do like the cap or the hand of the tassel. This one has a braided cord. Sorry, right Darren, we can't really hear you. Bring it closer. Okay. Um, so this one has a braided, it's either called the cap or the head of the tassel, and it has a braided cord. This is a different style, but you can see it has this braided cord around the top, which um, gives it a nice look. So let's look at how to make this one. So let's go ahead and switch back to the view of my hands. I apologize for all the switching. All right, is, I can't really tell, is it back on the view of my hands or? Yep. Okay. All right, so with this one, I have this, I have it started. Already, so there's um, this is the skirt of the tassel, and then this is either called the cap or the head, and then this is, of course, the handle. And you want to find something. So, this you do want to make it a little bit longer than what you want your original, your um, finished tassel to be, because when you trim it, you do lose a little bit of length um, when you're trimming it, 
And also you end up losing a little bit of length because this um, kind of gets pushed up into the cap of the tassel. So you do wanna make the tassel a little bit longer than what you're going to have as a finished tassel. And you can always trim it as short as you want it, but of course, then you can't really add anything back on if you make it too short. So make it a little bit longer than what you want it. Um, just get a piece of cardboard or a board like I have. Um, if you're gonna do a lot of them, it's nice to have a more permanent kind of a board. And just wrap, and I wrap this one. Darren, sorry to keep interrupting. Every time Isn't you turn your head, we can't hear you. I'm sorry, let me bring my computer closer. Hopefully that's better. Um, so if you have a hard board, then of course it's easier because it's not going to break. My cardboard will end up getting folded and it, you might have to make a second one, but that's, that's easy enough. So the first step is just to wrap your yarn around your board. And I did this in advance. So you wouldn't have to watch me do it. I did, um, I had four strands held together and I am, and this one, I have black and blue together and I did 50 wraps. So there's 200 strands of yarn. So it's a nice thick, um, a nice plush full skirt on the tassel. And then I made this braided, um, little braided cord, and that's what's gonna end up turning into the handle. And I just um, kind of threaded it through and I went ahead and tied it off though with just some yarn. So I'm not really gonna use this handle to tie it, to secure it, because I've tied it with this other yarn. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut that off. And so then I've got my handle ready. And when I made this, I have a, there's a loop on the bottom. So I'm just gonna thread that through the loop. And so I'll have, and I can pull it tight. And so I have a little kind of tassel on the end of my handle for the tassel. So that's it's kind of cute. And then see now with this one, I am gonna try to cut it on the very bottom, like how Claire was saying from before but I always kind of end up getting it off just a little bit. So go ahead and cut that the best you can. And then you take that away. And then you're left, you're left just with this, okay? Now, to make the little cap of it, um, I have this tish, these toilet tissue, or um, I think this was actually from a paper towel. Um, you just get a paper towel roll and you, if you want to, you can kind of double them up to make it a little, a little more firm, but you don't really need to. So um, go ahead and cut this away. So if you want to, you can double it up to make it a little bit firm, but I really haven't been doing that. So I just use one as it is. And then And with this one, I do like to use a thicker yarn because it, it goes so much faster. So I'm using this Wool Ease Thick and Quick by Lion Brand. And you can get this on lionbrand.com or michaels.com and it comes in so many great colors. Okay. And you just wanna cut off. I don't really measure it. I just cut off a nice big length of it and Put it through and then I'm just gonna just wrap it. And you're gonna end up wrapping it like three or four different layers. So the first time you go around, it's not gonna look real great. It's just gonna look pretty much like a cardboard tube with yarn wrapped around it. But after you go around two or three times, it starts to look a little bit more plush and it takes on a better, but there's nothing, I mean, there's, you can do two strands held together if you want it to go a little faster, but it is nice if it, you do want it to be nice and even. So you don't want it to get, if you do too many strands together, sometimes it gets um, uneven. And then it's hard to weave all of those ends in. If you've got four strands held together, it's kind of hard to weave in all four ends at the end and make it look neat if you've got them all together, so. Keep going all the way around. And you may end up needing to add more and that's fine. Okay. And you'll keep wrapping until 
um, it looks like this. It almost looks like a little apple. Doesn't that look like a little apple? So it almost looks like a little apple. And this one probably has um, like three or four, maybe even five layers. And you wanna keep wrapping it and only you will know when it's done because you want it to look the way you want it to look. But I like mine to look very plush and very soft. And that, I mean, when you look at that, you don't think, oh, there's a piece of, there's a piece of cardboard paper towel roll in the middle of it. You know, it looks a little bit nicer than that. So, um, and then you do want it to also fill up on the inside so that it holds onto the tassel nicely. Any questions about how I achieved this? And then at the end, pretend for a minute that I, I was wrapping it and now I'm finished. And then the way I weave my ends in is I'll just take them just kind of down through the other strands and then back up through the inside a couple of times. And then if I have ends to weave in, I'll just do that up and down maybe two or three, four times and then kind of pull it snug and then snip it off. And that's how I would weave the ends in, so. Okay, any questions? This is really, it's really very simple. And then you just, you just take the handle. And then you just pull it through. And now what you can do, um, if you really want it, you can leave this like this so it's easy to take on and off if nobody's really gonna be handling it because then you can change it you can take it off and put a different one on if you think you might want to change it to a different look sometime. See how that braided went on, it kind of gives it a different look. Or if you want to make it more permanent, a couple of options, you can sew it in place. Or if you use these beads, like just use a collection of beads and some findings and put them on the handle and then just tie them down tight, then that will um, kind of keep everything in place and it'll, it'll keep that cap from coming up, or you can use just a hot glue gun and squirt some hot glue. You just kind of go up in there with hot glue and then put the handle up through. Don't, you know, I always end up burning myself with hot glue. I'm gonna weave this in again. But I always end up burning myself with hot glue, so I always try not to use it very often, but it does come in handy. Do you, what do you think about hot glue? Do you use the Claire? Would you rather sew things in place? Well, I was just thinking you could probably have hot glued those ends down on the little cap if you really wanted to. You know, you can. Um, and I did on this one, but then I always end up, I'm just messy. I always end up with like glue in places where you don't want it to see. So I, and I think things are a little bit more high end and a little bit more luxurious without hot glue. So I try not to use hot glue. I feel like that almost cheapens it a little bit. Like if you see this hot glue showing, I feel like you're going to, feel less about it. Um, but if you're neat, if you're a very neat person, which I know you are, Claire, um, probably could get away with it. But I'm messy. I end up getting glue everywhere. So, And then that is, I want to see So this is a very, when I first saw tassels like this, somebody making them, I thought, gosh, it must be really complicated, but it's so easy. Do you think it looks easy, Claire? Would you try it? Or have you ever done this before? I think they look very fancy with their little hats on. They do, but they, it's so easy. I can't believe how easy it is. I was really impressed with how easy. I love something that looks nice, but is really easy. And then if you steam it, like steaming out this skirt, like I did before, then it changes the look of it, but it doesn't look bad you know, with the skirt being that full and fluffy. I mean, that one is not steamed. And this one is the same amount of yarn, but it is steamed. So I don't know if it really shows much different. This one just looks more orderly to me. It looks less um, chaotic, where this one just looks more like unbrushed. I don't know, what do you, what do you like better? Or is there that yeah, much? I mean, it, it looks like one of them just got a nice fresh blowout and the other one hasn't. <laughs> it's, which is actually, actually what happened. That's actually, exactly what went on so but it, you know it depends on what you like better but again if you wanted when you're trimming the bottom to make them even 
it's much easier to trim them once they've been steamed out. Okay, any questions? Oh, this? I like Kathy's idea to make this, um, the cap there to look like a little pumpkin for Halloween. Oh, that would be real cute. I didn't even think of that. Yeah, you could make an orange one. Or make it in white and then you have a little ghost. True. Yeah, this one's in white, but it's got the braided, braided top. Any other questions? I'm always expecting more questions, but it's, you know, it's no. pretty self-explanatory, really. I think we're good to move on to our next tassel. So this style is, the, this is the only other one I have. So I just have the three. So um, maybe, maybe we'll, I know I always say that we'll finish early, but sometimes we, we do actually. Oh, hang on a sec. Um, can you talk about how you did the braid on the cap there? We skipped that. Yes, yes. Just get this for my next one. So the braided So you just want to make a long braid out of um, whatever yarn you're using. Um, I don't, I think I did each because when you braid, you have three strands you're working with, and so each each bunch of the braids. I think this one has has four. Um, so you know there are twelve total strands of yarn braided together. So it gives it a nice thick chunky braid. And then all I did was. Um, before that handle was on, you just, see this one I didn't like how it turned out. I tried it a different way, but let me take, okay, I'll take them. So I recommend you know, you're starting with the cardboard tube and then you wrap it with yarn. You might not want to wrap it quite as many times. Leave it a little bit less and then tuck the end of that braid just on the inside. You don't want to go in too deep and fill up. You know, you do want to have a little bit of space in there. And then with the hot glue gun, you just want to put a little glue. I'm not going to do it because I want to save this for my next class, but you just want to put a little glue around the top. And then you're going to just glue this on around. And once you get the first circle done, um, then you're just going to follow it. You're just going to continue adding glue and wrapping it. Just keep, and you could either sew this in place or glue it. And then just keep wrapping it. And then once you get to the other end, um, you can cut it. When you cut it, of course, it's going to want to unravel. So um, right before you, you know, just kind of see where you're going to cut it and then tie it really tight with some more yarn and then tuck that on the other side. And then you can decide which side looks nicer, um, which side you want to be the top or which side you want to be the bottom. And then when you assemble it, um, just put the nicer looking side on the top. Um, and then you can decorate it with some beads or, or something like that. So does that make sense? Is that pretty easy? I do like to wrap this first because it, you don't want to look through it and see that cardboard. If there's any kind of space that's left open, you know, you want it, you don't want to see that cardboard through it. And, and the then, braid, you just started that with like a regular knot on top or was it loose at the top? When I first started the braid? Yeah. What I did was I took, um, I took the, the yarn and I just kind of doubled it over um, like the arm of a, <clears throat> my, my dining chair. And then I braided it and then I was able to slip it off the end of it. and. That way, I have this kind of loop. And um, with other ones, like if I was going to make a handle, I can put it through that loop and make the handle like I did on the other one. Um, so you could either use it for a handle or you could use it to decorate the cap. So um, even if you just tie this onto something and do the braid, and if you have to cut it to remove it then at that point, that's fine. You can like just tie it around a doorknob or anything, do the braid. And then if you have to cut it to remove it, um, just before you cut it, you know, go ahead and tie some yarn around it to, to seal it off and make it really tight. So, you know, it doesn't really, because those, those ends are going to be tucked inside, so they're not really going to show anyway. So it just depends on how you want to do it. Does that, does that make sense? Does that answer that question? 
Okay, yeah, because you're going to tuck that end in so you can yeah. hide a knot or something. Yeah, okay. so just tie it or just put a little dab of glue on there and just kind of twist it and that'll hold it in place. So. All right. Okay, anything else? And then you can use different colors or different size braids. So this one you can see, see how it kind of scooched and you can kind of see under it. And if that happens, you're just looking at more yarn under it. You're not looking at like a piece of cardboard. So. So it doesn't really show up, like you don't even really notice that. But if it were, you know, cardboard under there, you'd you'd know it would look really bad, I think. So. All right, ready to move on? I think so. So this tassel I think is fun, and you could do as many layers as you want. Um, with the three layers is fun, and you can use three different colors, or you can use all the same color, or even this cap could be a different color, and you can have four colors. So you can do anything you want with these different layered ones. Um, there's this one. And then this one has um, the other little cap that I made. So to do that, um, I found it the first time I made one like this, I just made all of the tassels the same length, put them together and then started trimming them. But I found it to be easier and it makes more sense to me if the tassels are all different lengths. So I cut um, cardboard in all different lengths to make, to make it a little bit easier to work with. So, and then I've got these two finished to help save on some time. And so I'm gonna wrap this one. Um, 50 times. If you used four strands held together, then it would be a lot faster. So, and with my darning needle, just going to, and I, I find it easier to do it this way. So I'm going to do it this way, and however you want to do it is fine. Make sure you're tying them very tight. And that's pretty much all there is to that. So that is, and then this one, I'll go ahead and finish these off. Do you, what do you use tassels for in your house, Claire? Do you have any tassels hanging around? I am tasselless at the moment. I don't have I'm, any. <laughs> I feel sad for you. That's a very sad statement to make. Well, see, I like the look of these three layered ones, but I've seen them like much, much, much smaller and then um, affixed to like earring wires. Well, you know, the same technique that I'm showing, you could do and make them as small as you want. I would recommend getting some, maybe some embroidery floss, which is you know nice and pretty and shiny or, or some, maybe some silk thread to make small ones. What do you think would be best for small ones? I mean, I've got a lot of fingering weight yarn scraps, so I might start with that, but. <laughs> I think that would work. See, I like a nice big dramatic tassel. There's nothing understated about a tassel. It's my theory. So. so you just make these. And then you can steam these out um, now at this point, which is probably a little bit easier. 
or you can just tie them together and kind of steam them in the layers. But I wouldn't probably trim them until they're all tied together and you see exactly what's going on. So separate them out and tie them together. So I like each layer kind of tied together separately. And you can add beads and you can add all kinds of stuff to make tassels even more decorative than they already are. And that they're very easy. Do you think they look like they're easy to make? Because they're, they're very easy. I think this multi-layer one probably looks much more complicated at least. I know I was like, how did you do these? Did you like, I had pictured, I guess, sort of threading each tassel up through the middle of the next one rather than stacking them like that. Well, you can do it that way. You can do it either way. Um, I found this, this is my least favorite one to make because they tend to kind of, you really have to kind of arrange them. And then once you kind of steam them out and brush them out a little bit, they tend to stay how you want them. But at first they, they kind of all kind of separate out how you don't want it. But um, they do take a little bit more fuss, a little bit more fussiness. They do look very impressive though. They, and then they're, they're really not hard to make. You just have to fuss over them a little bit. And then once you steam them, then they're easy to trim. And like this, this orange layer to me looks a little too long, but you can go ahead and just trim it off. You know, you cut, and when you're trimming them, I do caution you, like don't just like go in here and cut like a bunch off. You know, start small and then, because before you know it, you've cut too much. Like, so just kind of start small and kind of work your way up little by little. The same um, advice and, applies to cutting your own bangs, huh? <laughs> I don't, my advice to cutting your own bangs is do not cut your own bangs. Um, but you know, live, if you want to live life dangerously, then you can cut your own bangs. One of, one of my friends told me, hair is not teeth. That's a, apparently a Russian saying. Hair is not teeth, it's not permanent. So go ahead and cut your bangs and they'll grow back. But don't pull your own teeth because they won't grow back. Yes. But yeah, that's pretty. So. And then once you brush it out and steam it and start fussing with it, you can really make them very, very nice. But I found it easier to make the tassels in the, each layer in different lengths. At the first couple I did, I made them all the same length, um, thinking that once you stack them, that would offset them enough. And it didn't. And then so I started trimming them to make, make the other layers more visible. And I ended up cutting a lot off. So I thought, well, that's wasting a lot of yarn. So, um, but you can do it however you want. Could you add like um, in between each tassel, like a big bead or something to separate them, to space them out like that? You could, but then the bead would be hidden. I mean, if you have like a plain bead or something that's yeah, not- you've got like a plain wooden bead or something. Yeah, or... that's actually a good idea. Yeah, that's a really good idea that might work. Yeah, that would be a good, I think that would be a, a really good way to try it. So, and then this tassel actually turned out to be pretty big. Um, but for these, if you make a smaller tassel, what I did was um, I used these, this toilet paper roll, and then I just kind of folded it over on itself to make it smaller, and then fold, and then just put a piece of tape to hold it in place. And then by the time you're done wrapping it, it, you won't see the tape or you won't know that it was a tape or anything like that. And I did have so much stuff on my desk. Things get, oh, here we go. So this one, that's how I made this little one, um, which is real cute. And you can see it's, it's like less than half of that, of that one. 
but and you can make a bunch of these and then see which one looks right on which tassel. So that's a nice big um, cap on it. And that looks, it actually looks okay. But you see how different it looks with this small cap. That gives it a complete different look, I think. Um, and that's okay. So depending on what you want, and you could make, you could even stack them. See, why couldn't you do that and stack them and then have that hanging? I think that'd be real cute. And then maybe have a really long strings hanging out of the bottom with some beads on them for a little extra decoration. So what do you think, Claire? Are you gonna make some tassels and get some tassels going in your apartment? I was gonna say, you keep adding to this tassel. It's just gonna be the most exuberant tassel that ever tasseled. I, I feel like that's the kind of tassel you want. That's. <laughs> That's the kind of tassel that you want. And then for just like the most basic tassel, which is still very cute, you could, um, you just, will, you get a piece of, and I had my dad again cut this for me. You can just wrap, and you can cut this out of cardboard if you want. Um, again, don't pull it tight. When you're wrapping it, you don't want to pull it tight because then when you cut it, the yarn kind of bounces back and um, they'll be a little bit more uneven and harder to trim. So I you know, just try to wrap them loose when you're wrapping them. And with this hole cut in it, with this notch, you can just, you go through and you can tie it here in the middle. I was gonna ask what that notch was for. So it's just ease of access. Ease of access. You tie that in the middle. You cut that off. And then take your trusty darning needle. And if you wanna add, you don't have to add, I think you do need a handle though in order to hang it, but um, you know, whatever, you could put a chain on it. You could put something more decorative. So you kind of put that on the top, then I can adjust that to make it more on the very top. And then and then you slide that off. And then you've got a nice basic, and then you can kind of adjust it a little bit if you want. And then you got just like a nice basic tassel. This is the basic, I think this is what everyone thinks of when you say a tassel made out of yarn. I think when I told you, Claire, I was gonna do a class on tassels, I think this is what you were picturing, wasn't it? Probably, yes. I'm like, that's not gonna take very long. <laughs> that's what you said, that's not a class. That's, we're not gonna be able to do much of a class. But then that's even cute, right? That's even still cute. And if you steam this out and unravel the edges and you could tie a little satin ribbon around the middle to dress it up, um, lots of things you could do. So. You know, even if you make just a very simple one, or if you do this, um, what was it? The best tassel that ever tasseled? <laughs> yes. <laughs> the most exuberant tassel that ever tasseled. So you could do, and then even if you make just this simple one, you could um, make a cap for it. I think these caps just dress them up and just make them, whoops, don't want to put clear through, but you can kind of pull the um, head of the tassel inside the cap. Now look how fancy that looks. It looks very fancy. And even if you can see the yarn coming out the top, it's still okay. And then you can either sew that it That one place. really looks like a, a pumpkin decor decoration for Halloween. Yeah, I think I really like this one for that reason. So, and you could like do like little pieces of felt and glue on them or even beads or something to make like a jack o lanterns face or little buttons or something. That'd be super cute, wouldn't it? Yes, someone had suggested googly eyes, which I fully support. I said I'm in full support of a googly eye. I think that'd be very cute. So, yeah, so lots of choices for tassels. Um, we do have much a all couple I have, questions. If anyone has questions, we do. Yes, um, Kathy wanted to know: Is it just as easy to make tassels of leather or a similar material instead of yarn? I think um, with leather. 
the only thing I would caution would be it, it might be hard to cut through it. So before you get like layers and layers and layers of leather, make sure you have like a nice sharp, a really sharp knife or a, like a razor blade or a really, really sharp scissor that's going to cut through leather. Other than that, I think I've seen leather tassels before and they're beautiful. So um, with leather though, I think you might do it differently. Instead of wrapping it and cutting it, I think leather, Okay, let's pretend this is leather. I think with leather, they would add, like have a strip of leather and cut it like this, like a fringe. I think if I were gonna do a leather tassel, I would probably cut it like this, like a fringe and keep everything connected and then roll it up. Wouldn't you do that? How would you do it, Claire? Well, you could do it that way. I was thinking that maybe you have, you know, a certain number of pre-cut lengths of like a suede cord or something yeah. and then fold it like that. But that works too. I might, yeah, there's lots of different ways you could approach it. But um, my concern with leather would be if you get too many layers um, cutting through it. But other than that, um, a leather tassel is very beautiful. I've seen them before. And then you can make the, either the cap could be made out of leather or a different material or something. But yeah, I would, um, I'm not prepared to teach about that today really, but you know, you, I would Google it, like how to make tassels out of leather and a leather smith would probably have lots of ideas or different things, different ways of doing it. And then we did have a general question. What do you use tassels for? <laughs> I, um, it's kind of fun. I used to work at a store that sold tassels and I ended up, well, a, a furni home furnishing store and they sold tassels and I ended up buying a bunch of them. My son thought it was just ridiculous when I had tassels like all over the place. Um, uh, you can use them on, basically a good way to use them is if you have curtains like drapes, you can use them to hold your drapes back, which is very nice. It's more of a functional way to use a tassel. Um, you can use them on just like on a doorknob to just add decoration. You can use them on the cord of a lamp to, um, so that when you wanna turn it on or off the lamp, it's easy to reach for the tassel and see it. You can use them like on a ceiling fan, again, on the cord so it's easy to grab on. Um, if you're an extremely wealthy person and you have a big cord to pull for the butler, which I certainly do not have, um, you can put a tassel on that cord. To pull. Like on the, I'm always saying like the Adams family, they had that great big cord for the butler. But um, you know, just it's like a doorknob or if you have little tassels, you could put them on like a china closet, like on the little, um, little um, knobs on the doors or pretty much anywhere. Anyway, you could tie a, a couple of small tassels on the top of a teapot for decoration. Um, what would you use them for, Claire? See, I'm thinking more like smaller scale, scale wearable things, um, like making those tiny um, layered ones for like earrings or a necklace, or I have a bracelet that has a bunch of tassels on it. Um, and then Pauline asked as well um, about putting it on like the bottom of a shawl. And I've done that before where I've made like a triangular shawl and put tassels at each of the points. The, um, the one class we did teaching, we did a crocheted um, market bag out of cotton yarn. I made tassels like this and I put on the corners of the bottom of the bag. They were a little bit smaller than this one. And that was real cute. Like on the bottom of a bag, um, on the end, like you said, on a shawl or on a, you know, if you had a sweater with like drawstrings, you could put these on a drawstring, right? Would that be cute? A small one? Oh, yeah. Like on the ends of like your hoodie cords or something. Yeah, like a hoodie or cord or use something. Use it as a like. zipper pull. Yeah, or on a zipper pull. Um, smaller, right? You'd have to be a little bit smaller and easier to manage. You wouldn't want something this big. But yeah. I find it hard and tedious to make the smaller ones. I think that's why I like the bigger ones. Well, see, you know, I use journal. a lot smaller yarn than you do, so I'm thinking yeah. small. <laughs> yeah, somebody said they want to put one on an art journal. I think that would be great, like on a, um, you could put it on a journal with a, like a long string, and then you could wrap it um, to mark your page. Or if you made bookmarks, you could make little tassels and put them on a bookmark. Um, so many, you're really only limited by your imagination. There's like so many options, I think. You could make very fancy toys for your cat. Yes, actually, he was he was very excited this afternoon when I was making some of these tassels. He was helping me. He was playing with them. It was very fun, especially braiding the cord with, you know, when you're braiding long strands of yarn, you, you have to kind of flip them on to keep them from getting tangled. Yeah, he was very excited about them. Oh, yes, definitely. <laughs> oh, yes. Use them as like um, gift tags or accessories on wrapping. Mm hmm. 
put tassels everywhere, tassel your whole house. <laughs> there is no shortage of reasons to have a tassel. All right, I'm going to put the handout in the chat here in case anybody missed that and needed it again. Um, I'll put it as both a PDF and then as a link to the um, online version for anybody who's on a tablet or a phone right now. And then while we've got you all here still, we'll talk a little bit about some of our upcoming classes. Um, we are going to be teaching next Monday. We're going to have a special spooky class for Halloween where we're doing some spooky crocheted lace. <laughs> Here's the, this is it right here. I have it right here with me. So this is the crocheted lace on this beautiful shawl. And this shawl, it's a very nice shawl. It's not really big. I usually like to do a great big shawl, but this one, you might want to think of it more like a scarf. Um, kind of like if a scarf and a shawl had a baby. So it's very easy to wear. Yeah, I like that size a lot. It's very versatile. Yeah. And then for anyone in our audience who has been thinking about learning how to knit or you've learned a lot, little while ago and you need to brush up on your skills, uh, coming up in November, we have our Learn to Knit series. That's going to be on November 7th, 14th, and 28th for Knitting 101, 102, and 103. Um, I think those should be going up soon online for Michael, so you can sign up. And then we've got some special hat classes planned for December, but those will be out a little bit later. Okay, and if you do have any questions, if you're making tassels or if you think about questions as you're um, moving forward, um, you can contact me on either Instagram or on Facebook. So on Instagram, my name is Mr. Woolly Bear. Maybe Claire will put that in the chat for you so you can see how it's spelled. And then on Facebook, um, it's just my name and then you'll see my picture so you'll know it's me. Um, it just send me a direct message with whatever questions you have. And I'm always you know, happy to follow up with questions to answer questions or give you any pointers or you know, help you out any way that I can. So you know, you're, you're always, there's always options to get extra help. All right, anything else, Claire? I think that is it. I hope everyone goes forth and tassels. Go forth and tassel. So, all right. Have a great night. Thanks for coming to class.